After the announcement on the 15th October 2000 that the disease killing men in Guluwazi Bola, the health teams took over the burial of the dead. We convinced the community in a dictatorial way to save the situation that we are taking care of your dead. I felt bad, except that uh, even in the Bible it's written that the dust goes back to the dust. Progressive dictatorship Progressive indeed. Dictatorship. I like that. And so the burials went on. To bury these people, also there was a struggle. The, the DRDC, Gulu and so on, they could not find a place. At the end, Museveni, very clever, he said, OK, I will give it the, the place. The army gave us this land. A relative of the first victim of Ebola referred in medical terms as patient zero, 19-year-old George, who had lost his aunt and grandmother to the disease, transformed from being a clerk at the judiciary to heading the burial team. Nurses and everybody were fearing. I told them, my grandmother is inside here. I am. Tell me what to do. A doctor at the time from the World Health Organization trained him three PDF officers and a few others on how to go about burying the dead. The first day, very interesting, when we had uh, seven bodies in Gulu Hospital, six bodies in Ilacho Hospital, then we had 18 bodies waiting in the mortuary to be buried. Only he could call this interesting. The bodies had decomposed. The second body that I picked to put in the bag, yeah, I picked like this and the hand of the lady remained in my hand, you know. The dead body remains infective immediately after death. But for how long is uh, what I, I cannot answer right now. In fact, in the latest outbreak of the disease in West Africa, the World Health Organization put new infections as a result of contact with the dead at over 20%. George recalls that as undertakers, they were all well protected with jeer. Mobile police officers helped dig the graves. With the excavator, myself, and we made the, the first 100 graves there. But now when it comes for burial, we were only three. Ebola struck Gulu at the height of the Lord's Resistance Army insurgency. Tell Alfred Uyo, a driver, learned that Ebola was a shared come. fear. I met rebel about three times. But they, when they hear the sound of the ambulance, you'll see them also running. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody bothered to think of suiting you. I think for them, they say when they suit that person, then the body also goes to them. Alfred ferried a total of 67 bodies to the barracks from the hospitals and the community. Oh yes, he had time to do the counting. Other drivers brought the rest for George to bury. The worst thing, even the soldiers who were brought for me to bury, they ran and left me. We formed a new burial team, 12 members, but all of the 11 died. He, however, still rode through town with a pile of dead bodies tied up like wood. Everybody, you know, people collapsed by the roadside. <laughs> people who saw it. George soon got tired of the death and the witch doctors fueling ignorance about the disease. In Pabo, one claimed to cure it. So I had no choice, but when I went there, I brought him and I burnt all the shrine. When he reached here, he was very positive people. About the eight people we brought were positive. He died with four of his patients. George's job took him to Masindi district, which he describes as worse than Gulu. The guy who was sent to pick me from Masindi just came and parked the car and took a board and ran and left me. 19-year-old George had aged overnight, drove to the town from Kinyara. He was shocked by what he saw in Masindi hospital. The doctor was left in the world alone. The man in charge of barrios then had to take on the role of a health worker, but first things first, seven dead bodies were in the ward. Got those dead bodies, packed them into the bag, pulled them into one room in the corner. Then I started putting drip. Not knowing where to bury the bodies, he opted for the hospital compound where he single-handedly dug a mass grave. WHO records show that 19 people died in Masindi. Since 2000 up to now, people have been demanding for their loved ones to take them for a decent burial. But this has not been possible. The questions of safety have been arising. Are the graves safe? The remains that are within, are they safe? And from what we've noticed, most of the graves are caving in. We took all the precautions to bury the dead bodies. 
for how long are they going to be here and for how long are we, the government, going to maintain this? And I know we are not maintaining it well. Is the virus still there? That is the question. Is it? The knowledge we have about the virus is that it would not survive when it is out of the cells. Now the cells are completely dead, they have been dead over a long period of time. Dr. Lutuama, the head of Abovirology at the Uganda Virus Research Institute, who played a big role in searching for samples. During the 2000 outbreak, however, cautions against picking anything from the dead bodies. Having touched some of the graves, I quizzed Dr. Lutuama further on the slight probability of contracting the disease from the open graves. Nobody has gone to the dead after many years and picked tissue to go and test whether these tissues have got the virus there. If PCR probably is done, there are probably particles of the virus there, but it doesn't mean that the virus is live virus. He agrees that this could be an area of research to allay the fears of many. Florence Alimba, NTV in Glue District.